We've just finished our first week back for the spring sitting of the legislature. And uh, this is a video we're going to try to do at the end of every week just to give you an update on what's happening at Queen's Park. One of the big issues this week is that families um, with children with autism were unfortunately back protesting on the lawn of Queen's Park. It's completely unacceptable that the government is delaying the rollout of the new Ontario Autism Program uh, into next year. Families want certainty. They want an evidence-based, needs-based program to serve children with autism. And it certainly raises the issue that we need programs that support children of all abilities and with all special needs. Obviously, uh, the ongoing negotiations with teachers unions and obviously there will be a strike at the end of this week uh, dominated much of question period. And the bottom line is, is if the government doesn't back track on its proposal to increase class sizes to 25 or even 28 uh, on average. Uh, if it doesn't backtrack on bringing in uh, mandatory e-learning and if it doesn't recognize that per student cuts to education are not going to provide the quality of education that parents and students want and the people of Ontario demanding, uh, then this, uh, the strike action uh, will likely continue. One of the issues I raised this week in question period was the fact that, you know, given the fact that we have a hallway medicine crisis, we have many hospitals overcrowded, um, the government needs to recognize how its policy changes in certain areas are contributing to that. One of those being that last year the government removed paid sick days and also um, allow now once again uh, allow uh, employers to require that their employees uh, get a sick note uh, before they can miss work. The bottom line is, is public health officials, other experts, 175 uh, public health care workers all wrote a letter to the Premier saying that these workplace changes are contributing uh, to threats to public uh, health uh, because a number of Ontarians are going to work sick because they can't afford to stay home uh, or they're having to go get notes uh, at a doctor's office when they should be staying home uh, and, and getting well in the first place. And it just shows you how some of the workplace changes and the backtracking of various uh, workplace protections um, have other ramifications that affect and hurt our, our uh, public health system. One of the things that dominated the headlines, whether it should have or not, is plate gate and the fact that the government uh, license plates uh, can't be seen in certain lighting conditions. We've also learned that uh, photo radar, uh, red light cameras uh, can't read the plates in some municipalities, which is raising serious public uh, safety concerns, uh, particularly among uh, people in law enforcement. And to me, it's just you know an unfortunate example of how oftentimes the important issues that we should be talking about here at Queens Park get sidelined by the premier's uh, vanity projects to rebrand Ontario. And that I really wish the Premier and urge the Premier to focus on issues that really matter instead of vanity projects around rebranding Ontario and the way that he would like to see it happen. And the license plates have been, you know, such a classic example of that. And it's overshadowed, I think, certain important reports that were released this week. For instance, the Financial Accountability Officer of Ontario uh, released a report showing that the tax cuts that the cur current government is bringing in primarily benefit the wealthiest 20% of Ontarians. And if we could reverse those tax cuts, it would certainly uh, provide more government revenue to fund things like healthcare, education, and social services for the most vulnerable. And unfortunately, you know, the release of that report didn't get, I think, the uh, publicity it deserved or the coverage it deserved uh, because so much of the media cycle was dominated by Playgate and uh, the Premier's vanity project and how the rollout of that uh, didn't go so well for the government. I had an opportunity this week uh, to speak to the Registered Nurses Association of Ontario. They're having their convention uh, in, in Toronto. And you know, it was an honor to speak to them and to talk about the importance of addressing the social determinants of health and the way in which things like poverty and homelessness uh, and environmental protections affect people's health and well-being and the importance of investing in you know, nurses, particularly in the long-term care uh, sector and also in addressing uh, harm reduction strategies to help address the um, um, overdose opioid crisis. 
And I just want to close by saying that um, the committee I'm on, General Government, met this week and um, reviewed legislation uh, affecting realtors and legislation that would bring in tax fairness for realtors, something I've been advocating for for many years. And I just want to thank you know the number of realtors in Guelph and across the province who have reached out for me to me to talk about the need to better regulate the profession, but also the need to ensure that we have fair ta tax policies for realtors. It's been a productive week uh, at Queen's Park. I'm looking forward to returning to Guelph and being a part of a number of events and meetings with constituents this weekend.